Cheers. 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 So I just want to say, yeah, I just want to say one thing because when I was a new faculty member, you know, I, I came to Stanford, and uh, you know, I, I had been here undergraduate, okay, I mean graduate school, graduate school. graduate school, and you know, the best thing that ever happened to me was I started working with John on projects, and I will say, as I describe people, there are two kinds of colleagues you can have who are really good: those that step forward when good things happen, and those that step back. And I will say that John always stepped back and made room for all the junior faculty that had come on. And if you think about all the people under him that are now <coughs> faculty standing around the room and stuff like that, I think John had a, a very large say, at least in my career, and I think all of us. And I, I just want to thank nice you, Mark, for yeah, stepping thank back. Thank you, thank you. Well, you know, it, the, the, I, I've always said, um, I, I did two great things, and now a third, I'd say. Um, the first was to, choose the person who's going to be my, my life partner. That's really important. <laughs> <laughs> the, the second was to come to Stanford, and I still remember uh, when I interviewed, um, and Don Cruz was on my interview schedule. I got a little nervous about that. But, uh, but he gave me a really good piece of advice. I said, Don, how do you get so much done? He said, well, I don't watch TV. <laughs> and I said, right, got it. <laughs> Uh, so coming to Stanford, I mean, it, it's just terrific. The colleagues you have, I mean, and the quality of the students that we have, and that certainly, um, that's what brought me back to the university after I had done the startup thing. Uh, the students are just the secret weapon of a great university, and I think uh, we're really blessed to have such great students and such great colleagues. Uh, and then the third thing I did was forming a collaboration with Dave Patterson. That was a, um, we worked well together well. We um, we managed to learn how to push each other harder to get the ideas right and the concepts right and clear uh, in a way that um, we remain friends while we uh, <laughs> 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 so, so start because you were both assistant professor or something at the time, kind of competing. So what was the first kind yeah, of we both about? we were both kind of just tenured mm -hmm. and you know, one of the problems with the risk, uh, I, we were talking about, people were asking, why was there such disbelief about the risk engineers? You know, some of it was just pure NIH and the normal thing that goes on in companies where, you know, how could a bunch of academics do something interesting? Or you didn't put floating point in. When you put floating point in, all the advantages are gonna go away. So things like that. But there was another problem, which is we didn't have a good scientific description of why these ideas resulted in faster computers. And it wasn't until some number of years later that all of a sudden, after I read a paper about the VAX and the designers of the digital uh, VAX machine discovering that, in fact, their machine wasn't a one million instructions per second machine, it was a half a million instructions per second. And all of a sudden it hit me. That led to that fundamental equation. Dave and I said, you know, this is the way people should think about designing computers. And the books at the time, were sort of what we called supermarket books. Column A was about machine one, column B was, you know, next pages were machine two. There was no attempt to compare them or say this is better, that's better. And not, it wasn't even performance focused. It was focused on abstract measures of what might make these machines interesting, or code size, even worse, code size. So Dave and I were very upset and said, this is not budget. And I said, you know, we could do a better job. We could write a better book. And he had a, he was going to become chairman at Berkeley. And he was desperately afraid that his technical career would be over when he became chairman at Berkeley. So um, we decided to write the book and we holed up at, at what was then Deck Circ, um, Deck World, at Deck World, the Western Research Lab here. And two days a week, he would come down from Berkeley. I would go over there and we would work. And the blessing is we, we, because we decided to use it for a course shortly after we started writing, we had to finish chapters in time. So I'm FedExing chapters up to Dave because he's got to teach with them a day later and he's got to get it in time. But the students were really great. We had the, today, you know, I, I think what we put those poor students through with the, the alpha version of the book, which had a lot of problems in it and a lot of mistakes and things like that. You know, on the other hand, anybody who has an alpha version today Holds it with pride. It's a kind of special <laughs> badge, you know. So, but that was that was the way we did it. And the other blessing we had was, we asked our colleagues um, a 
across the country to be to be real critics of what we were trying to write, and that we would really listen to their opinion about how to make the book better. And they really did help make make it better over time, and that that really ended up. So we ended up with something really great. And I think we were certainly inspired. But if you look at the first edition, and you look at the inspiration, it's it's Don Canus, uh, Volume One, um, and. We were inspired by that and took many, took some rating problems, how difficult they were, and a number of other things uh, directly from that because we admired what that book had managed to do for algorithms on the side of algorithms. So, so I was taught from a photocopied version of a draft of the first edition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great small market, you didn't miss much uh, in terms of the <laughs> <laughs> But it, it, you know the other amazing thing about the book in the first year, we sold as many copies to practicing engineers as we sold to the textbook market, and that was the publisher was completely astonished because they said, "Look, normally there's textbooks and there's books for practicing engineers, and they don't cross over that much. You know, might just get some in graduate school, but but we sold just as many, and that that was a really interesting lesson. Dave Cutler, at, who was then at uh, at, at uh, Microsoft um, bought a set for the whole team and then Microsoft put it in the Microsoft store so you could get the book just by going to the Microsoft store. It was orderable along with pens and pencils. And other <laughs> <things>. <laughs> How many languages was it eventually? Oh, translated? now I think we're about 12 or so. Yeah. Um, What's the yeah. most obscure? Probably Maybe Romanian, Greek, <laughs> Romanian, <laughs> Romanian, <laughs> Romanian. 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 Greek. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably some things like that that are the most obscure. So, yeah. I, I mean, I have them in all these languages. But <laughs> <laughs> they're good to put on your bookcase, you know. <laughs> but. Questions, comments, something? Should we cut the cake? We can cut the cake, yeah. <laughs> Go for it.